We are live. Good morning. Sorry that we're a few minutes late, some minor technical difficulties, but all is good. We're here with you this morning. Thank you for joining me. My name is Carrie Mandel, proud Head Sweats Ambassador, and with me is my assistant, Rachel. Hi. We are coming to you from Princeton, New Jersey, um, in my living room, so welcome. Um, as most of you know, you tuned in last week, I am a fitness enthusiast. I am an ultra runner, a Oh, triathlon, uh, Ironman, um, yogi, of course, and I own Empower Yoga over by the College of New Jersey, and we're going to be coming to you each week with about 30 minutes of fun, um, just getting you ready for your runs or a great little post stretch and move through some yoga posture together. So um, each week, my plan is to kind of build from one week to the other. Um, so yeah, start child's pose. And I'll talk to you a little bit more as we kind of begin here. So with your knees wide, think about dropping your butt to your heels, right? So child's pose is our resting pose. It's also kind of a great opening kind of grounding pose. So a lot of times in yoga, we want to begin just kind of centering ourselves. So find your way onto the mat, and if people kind of pop on, we get situated. Think about here, just settling in. So the first few moments of our practice is really about connecting to our breath and bringing some awareness into the body. So letting go of anything that happened prior and not worrying about where you're going from here, but just be present. So for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to be together breathing on our mat and nothing else matters. So just take a few breaths. If you guys have any blocks, or pillows, you might want to grab them as before we begin as well. I should have mentioned that. Um, they might be able to help support your practice. And I see some of you are joining in and typing. I will try to get to any comments or questions at the end of our video. And I just appreciate you being here. So if you were to take one of my yoga classes at the studio, we tend to move a little bit quicker. Um, today's focus is really going to be about learning and understanding the movements um, and really feeling a good stretch. So keep that in mind. So as we begin here in your child's pose, I want you to start to tune into your breath. You have the option to keep your hands out in front of you or underneath or by your side. You can even reach for your feet, whatever's comfortable for you. Resting your third eye onto the mat, so right by your forehead. Just start to breathe. And let's have an intention for our practice this morning. So give me an idea or mantra, something that's working something that you might need to work on that's going to help and support you throughout you know, our 30 minutes of your practice. It might just be to be present. It might just be to focus on your breath, to get a good stretch. Whatever that may be, take an opportunity here to set that intention. And take a moment to show yourself a little bit of love and gratitude for making time on your mat, especially in this kind of chaotic world that we're in right now as we start to adjust to our new norm of everyday life and what that looks like for us, can you find a little bit of peace and gratitude? Even sometimes in the darkest of days or hours, it might not seem like there's a lot to be grateful for, but there is. So as we flow today, take an opportunity to, to recognize some of that, to maybe start to appreciate all of your, your body does Appreciate the fact that you still get to move, that we can work out, that we can see each other and communicate through technology, that the sun is shining, because I'm grateful for that this morning, it was rainy yesterday, whatever that may be for you. So as you start here in child's pose, if your hands are behind you, extend them out in front of you and start to walk your hands over to the left. Now as we walk our hands here, think about drawing your right butt cheek closer to your heel. It starts to kind of, um, Lift up a little bit, and I really want you to focus on the side body stretch. At any point this morning, if things become a little challenging, you need to take a break, you can always come back to child's pose. As you inhale, bring your arms back through center, and as you exhale, allow them to fall over to the other side. So walking them over to the right. Notice if your left butt cheek started to lift up, and think about sending it back, and just breathe here. And then inhale, bring it back through center. Start to press up onto um, lifting up your chest. And we're going to make our way onto our back. So start to rise up. 
Come up to like a tabletop position, and however you want to get there. Come onto your bottom. Hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. Start to rock a little bit side to side. And then with your left leg hugging in, extend your right leg long. This is a great psoas. Feel your right hands on the earth and the right foot is active. With the left knee drawing in, breathe here. Roll out your ankle a little bit. First in one direction and then switching direction. And then pausing back at center, take a breath in. As you exhale the final twist, allow that left knee to fall over to the right. Use your right arm as a guide to help you. Now your left arm can tee out to the side, or you can extend your left arm long. It feels comfortable for you. Take another breath here. As you inhale, bring it back through center. Hug both knees back into the chest, and we'll come to the other side. So your left leg will extend long and your right leg draws in. Feel the nice psoas stretch on this side and roll out your ankle in one direction. And then roll it out in the other. Now to remember to breathe, breathing is probably the most important thing. Just start to notice your breath, your inhales and your exhales. Now pausing here, um, take a breath in. As you exhale, allow your right leg to fall over to the left. Take that left arm as a guide. Tee out your arm or goal post your arm, pressing your shoulders into the mat. Now your gaze is to the ceiling or towards the left. Breathe here. And in the spinal twist, think about drawing your shoulders back to make sure that they're not lifted. And take a few more breaths here. If you want to begin to cultivate what we call ujjayi breath, it's this audible breath. Kind of sounds like the ocean. Almost like you're fogging up a mirror. Seal your lips. Take an inhale through your nose. And then exhale out through your nose. Maybe start to tune into that. As you inhale, bring it back through center. Hug your knees back into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. And then release your feet to the mat. You want your feet about hips width distance, and you want to be able to graze your heels with your fingertips. We're going to set up for a bridge pose. On an inhale, Rachel's going to start to lift her hips high. Now, we want this to be pretty active because we want to start to engage your glutes. But if you're dealing with an injury, you're not really feeling it this morning, um, you're uncomfortable in any way, you can always take a block and slide it underneath your sacrum, right? And then lower down. But Rachel's going to keep it lifted. She's going to do the advanced poses. I'll try to show you as many advanced or modified um, poses so that um, depending on the day and how you're feeling, you can always have ways to change it up or, or modify to help support your practice or enhance your practice. So now, when you're in this bridge pose, we want to think less of a back bend. So we're not like hyper extending. I really want you to think about squeezing your butt. If you want to intensify it, you can grab a block between your thighs and think about wrapping your thighs around the block. Just take a few breaths here in your bridge. Shoulders are pressing into the mat arms by your side. Now, Rachel's really flexible. So don't, as we go along, if you notice that I can't do that, if you say that to yourself, don't. Don't worry. Um, she's been practicing for a while. So it's about your practice. It's not about anybody else or what you can or can't do. And the beauty of yoga is every day is different. And it's an opportunity to discover something new about yourself, right? So if you have the block, remove it for a second. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, lower segmentally, upper, middle, and lower back to the mat. We're going to come to this again, but we're going to add on a little bit. As you inhale, press back up, bridge pose. Start to extend your left leg long. And cross your left ankle over your right leg. So now this is a figure four bridge. With this left leg crossed, you start to open up the hip. Keep the butt engaged. Really ground down to that right foot. So you should feel this opening. Left knee, uh, excuse me, left foot is flexed. That also helps protect the knee. You're breathing here in your bridge. Take another inhale. And as you exhale, lower segmentally, upper middle, lower back. Now keep the leg crossed and find a figure four stretch. So grab behind your right thigh. Keep your legs flexed. Now think about pressing your left ankle into the right knee. If you want, take your left hand and press the knee away. Add some resistance. So now we have these two opposing forces of energy. Your right leg is drawing in as your left leg is drawing away. And just breathe. If you're by a wall, you can put your feet on the wall to help a little bit. If this doesn't feel good, you can also lower your right foot to the mat and still get that opening of the left hip. Take a breath in. Now, keeping your legs where they are, release your hands and allow your legs to fall over to the left again. If, to get a really good, um, is this? your uh, hip flexor, I want your hip 
and knee in line with one another. So you need to walk your leg out a little bit or your left leg in. Think about pressing your left heel into your right leg. So you really think about squaring it up. And this kind of gets in that um, hip flexor. This is one of my favorite little spinal twists. As you inhale, bring it back to center. Uncross your left leg, and we'll get set up for the other side. Take a round of breath here, inhaling and exhaling. On your next inhale, come back to your bridge pose. You're going to lift your hips nice and high. This time, we'll extend the right leg long. Heels reaching towards the front of your mat. Cross your right leg over your left. Breathe here. Find your figure four bridge. Notice that you're getting a little lazy. It starts to dip. Again, you can slide that block if you need to. But really start to engage the glutes. So as runners and cyclists, we're very quad dominant. And it's very important to really um, work our butt. So this is a great way to do this. Um, so many different fun variations. Maybe we'll explore a different one next week. Breathe here. Take an inhale. Feeling a stretch. So there's a lot going on in this pose. Feel it. Take a breath in. Exhale. Release lower segmentally, upper, middle, and lower back. And go for that figure four stretch, grabbing behind your left leg. Draw your left knee into your chest. Maybe take your right hand. Press your right knee away. Or bringing this left foot into the wall. Or keeping the left foot on the mat. Yogi's choice. Final works for you. Breathe here. We hold a lot of stress and tension in our hips. So the more we can kind of get rid of that stuck energy, the better off that we can be. It won't, it only, it helps us physically when we're running, but it also helps mentally too to let some of it go, some of the toxins and feel good and just feel everything kind of melt away. Take another breath in. As you exhale, allow your legs to fall to the right this time. Notice, is your left knee in line with your hip? That's going to get you that uh, hip flexor stretch. So really start to breathe here. And then pressing your left heel gently. Now, you don't want anything around like the joint. You don't want to give too much pressure. But you should feel this nice little stretch in the hip flexor. It's kind of nice. Um, if you're with someone, they can give you some little adjustments and a little bit of love. <laughs> and then come back to center. Uncross your right leg. Maybe windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Good. And then drag your knees into your chest. Start to rock and roll up and down your spine. Take like five or so rock and rolls. But we're going to come back to that tabletop position. So you're going to rock and roll a few times. Shoulders over your wrists, hips over your knees. On an inhale, belly drops, chest lifts. Pause here. This is your cow pose. As you hold this cow pose, I want you to think about drawing your shoulder blades down your back and broadening your chest and collarbone. Crown head is reaching towards the ceiling. Hands are wide. You're pressing into the mat. Take a breath in. As you exhale, press the ground away. Cat pose. Pause here. Notice the rounding in your spine. The belly pulling in. Crown head now is reaching towards the floor. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale for cat pose. So take a few more just like this. You can add any kind of creative movements. If you really want to open up the forearms, you can flip the direction of your palms. Rachel's going to show us. You can come onto the top of your hands, or you can bring your uh, fingertips back towards your knees with palms down. This kind of gets a nice stretch in your forearms and wrists. Our wrists do a lot of work for us, especially if we're typing on the computer, so showing them a little bit of love is always kind of nice. You can wiggle on your tail, Wag your tail from side to side. Hip circles. Let's see some hip circles rage. There you go. One direction and then the other, whatever feels good. We're going to be back in this tabletop position in five. Cat cow for four. Last three. Two. Last one. By request from Rachel, we're going to stretch the shoulders just a little bit here. Inhale, right arm's going to reach up towards the ceiling. I want you to gaze up to your right arm. Start to roll out your wrist in one direction and the other. Take an inhale, reach. Exhale, thread the needle. Right arm comes underneath your left. Now, the right shoulder comes down to the mat. Your left hand can walk out in front of you. Your left hand, just like this, can come behind your back. So choose the option that works for you. Now I want you to take your left leg and straighten it out behind you with your left foot on the floor and just feel the stretch in the back of the left leg. So now you get the shoulder stretch. You're kind of feeling the stretch of the hamstring. You're breathing here. If this is too much with the left leg uh, straightened, drop the left knee. It's cool. If you want to intensify it and work on your balance a little bit, you can certainly lift the left leg. If you're feeling really crazy, grab a hold. Oh. Rachel's going to bring the left foot to her 
right hand. I was also going to say you can bind and reach for the left leg with the right hand. So these are variations or hashtag yoga goals. They don't have to be today. Wherever you are, release your left foot to the mat. Release your left hand, and on the inhale, you're going to sweep back up, open back up. Release your right hand, come back to your tabletop position, and we'll move to the other side. Inhale, left arm will reach up. Gaze up to your left hand, roll your wrist out in one direction, and then the other. Take a breath in. Exhale, thread the needle. So you have the same options on this side. Walk your right hand in front of you. Walk it behind your back. Start to extend your right leg. And as you extend this leg, think about heels reaching toward the floor. Get a stretch in the back of the leg. If you're feeling a little crazy, want a different variation, lift the leg. Bring the foot to your hand. Go for the bind. So many choices. And today, it might just be the shoulder stretch with knees down, and that's enough, and that's totally cool, too. So, breathe. Release your knee if you haven't done so already. Press into your right hand. Inhale, left arm's going to reach back up, open up, and then come back to your tabletop position. Now hold here for a moment in tabletop. Rich, you might need to walk forward just a little bit more for me. Good. Extend your left leg long. I want your left, um, keep your hips in line. So drop that left hip a little bit. Keep it kind of squared. Toes flex and the foot's towards the floor. Take a breath in. As you exhale, cross your left leg over your right and start to gaze over your right shoulder. Bring the left toes to the mat. This is a great stretch for the legs. Breathe here. And then as you inhale, bring it back to your center. Keep the left leg lifted. Engage the glute. But this time, extend your right arm long. So we're going to find a little bit of balance here. So your right arm is extended and your left leg is extended. Take a breath in. As you exhale, I want you to tap elbow to knee. Engage the core. Build some internal heat. And then inhale, re-extend. We'll do that four more times. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, re-extend. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, re-extend. Two more. Crunch it in. And extend. Last one. Crunch. Extend. Hold here. Take a breath in. As you exhale, release your right hand. Release your left knee. Wag your tail side to side and breathe. Coming into the other side, smile, and come back to that intention. Notice if it's gone anywhere. It starts to extend your right leg long, hips square, toes flex towards the earth. Take a breath here. Cross your right leg behind your left. Take the stretch first in the back, ease over your left shoulder. Think about drawing your right heel to the mat. Breathe. And then inhale, bring it back through center. Right leg is lifted. This time, extend your left arm. Reaching left hand, right foot. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, re-extend. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, re-extend. Elbow to knee. That's three. We've got two more. Last one. Hold here. Stay lifted. Stay extended. Take a breath in. Nice work, great. Exhale, release your right foot, release your left hand, wiggle it out side to side, come back to that tabletop. Now curl your toes, lift your hips high, downward facing dog, breathe here. Get your fingers nice and wide. So you're in an inverted V, hips are high. Be mindful that you're not dumping in the shoulder. So this is what the dumping kind of looks like, chest arching. I want you to think about drawing your ribs in, keep your belly engaged, and allow your shoulders to draw down, squeeze. Think about rotation of the um, eyes and the elbows are drawing in. So this is a very active pose, and you want to feel really strong in your down dog. So just notice what's happening in the shoulders. Don't get lazy. From your downward facing dog, bend your knees, start to gaze forward, and walk to the front of your mat. Find a forward fold, rag dog. Place a generous bend in your knees. Grab um, any, any back or forward folding variation. You can have your hands behind your legs. You can have your hands and legs behind your head, drawing the crown of the head towards the floor, interlaced at your low back, rag doll, wrapping opposite hand to opposite elbow, whatever feels right for you. And this is the one time in our yoga practice that we can kind of be a little loosey-goosey, right? A lot of the times when we're practicing, we really want to focus on the alignment and tap into our strength. But I want you here to let go of the head. Try not to like look up at the screen right now or to see what Rachel's doing. She's not doing anything, she's just folding in half, and the crown is reaching towards the floor. Now think about all the negativity, all the things that are happening in your life that you don't need, and imagine it just rolling off your back, rolling out to the shoulders, and rolling out to the crown of the head. Leave it in the floor, forget about it, you don't need it. Release your hands to the mat, and start to rise one vertebrae at a time, making your way up to standing. 
Finding an extended mountain pose. Inhale, arms will reach up overhead. Exhale, hands come together at heart center and then by your side, Tadasana. Inhale, arms reach up, extend, take a full body stretch. This time as you exhale, forward fold. We'll come to a little sun one. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step your right foot back, drop your right knee, untuck your toes, arms rise. Anshayasana, this is a low lunge. Think about lifting out of the bowl of the pelvis. Notice if you're arching in your low back, get rid of it. Pull your ribs in, tuck your tailbone, take a breath here in. As you exhale, plant your hands, plank pose, drop your knees, lower belly, chest, and chin to the mat in one piece. Elbows raise your ribs, inhale, low cobra. Gaze is down, spine is long, and low cobra. You're just kind of peeling your body off the mat. Exhale, release, press it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lift. Keep your toes facing the earth, square the hips. Exhale, bring your knee to nose, plant the foot, low lunge on this side. Drop your left knee, untuck your toes, arms rise. Biceps by your ears, spin your pinky fingers in. This helps draw the shoulder blades down the back. Take a breath in. As you exhale, plant your hands and step to the front, forward fold. Inhale, halfway left, pause here. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, keep the spine long, nice work. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, stand tall, extend in mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step your left foot back, drop your left knee, keep your toes this time. Inhale, arms rise. Okay, so with the toes flexed or pressing into the mat, you should feel this left hip flexor. Take a breath here, inhale. As you exhale, half split, and this is where blocks might come handy. Um, if you have them, you can bring your blocks underneath your hands. You can also use pillows or anything that's accessible to you, water bottle. Think about strapping that right hip back and just feeling a stretch in the left hamstring. Nice work, take a breath here. Inhale, re-bend the right leg, arms reach up overhead. As you exhale, plant your hands, plank pose. Drop your knees, lower belly, chest, and chin. Inhale, low cobra. Exhale, press it downward, facing dog. Inhale, left leg, is going to lift. Exhale, step it through, low lunge. Drop your right knee, keep your toes. Feel the stretch in the right hip flexor this time. Arms extend up overhead for a breath. Find your low lunge, Anjayasana. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, plant your hands, straighten your left leg back. Grab those blocks if you need to. Feel the hamstring stretch here. Take a few breaths. You've got this. Beautiful. Rebend your left leg. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, plant your hands. Step to the front, forward fold. Nice work. Inhale, halfway lift on that flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Stand tall. Exhale, hands come to heart center and by your side. Tadasana, mountain pose. Nice job. Smile. Inhale, arms re-extend. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, plank pose. Now pause here. You're welcome to continue to drop your knees or find your low push-up. This is your Chaturanga Dandasana. Elbows are bent 90 degrees. Inhale, upward facing dog. The difference between up dog and cobra, arms are straight, hips are lifted, knees are lifted, just like Rachel's doing right here. Shoulders are drawing down, you're spreading your collarbone. Feel a stretch in the back, squeeze your bum. Exhale, release, press it back down, we're facing dog. Inhale, left leg's gonna lift. Exhale, step it through, this time warrior one. Square your hips, shoulders are stacked. Walk your right hip out to the side a little bit. Arms will extend up overhead. If this doesn't feel good, you can always gold post your arms or bring your hands together at heart center. We're just here for one more breath. We're gonna come into a little shoulder stretch and leg stretch. Take your hands, interlace them behind your low back. Broaden the chest. On an inhale, take a little micro back bend. And as you exhale, humble warrior, you're gonna drain your left shoulder inside of your left leg. Now, very important here, draw your left hip back and your right hip forward, really square it off. Press into the outside edge of your back foot. Now you want your feet nice and wide, this is gonna help with stability. So if your knees or your feet are too narrow, you're not gonna feel the stretch, you're gonna wobble and maybe fall over. Maybe start to lift your hands off your low back, reaching towards the front. As you inhale, I want you to halfway lift, and as you exhale, pivot to the right, wide-legged forward fold. So your feet turn kind of towards the corners of your mat, and you're coming into this forward fold here. Now bend into your left leg, and bend into your right leg. Take a little bit of side lunges, and we'll pause to the left in what we call skandasana, or a side lunge. Now Rachel can bring her heel down to the floor, 
Rachel can bring her butt to the floor. That's not necessarily the case. Probably you're not able to do that. So the goal here is try to keep your heel down, your leg extended, and your toes, right toes facing the earth. If you can't keep your heel down, place your bum on a block or a pillow or something. The goal here is not to be rounding the chest. Um, you want to be thinking about expansion of the chest, the heart, and you're getting into this left hip. If you don't have a block accessible and your heel is lifted, don't come so low. That's okay, too. You can stay a little bit higher, and that's all right, just like Rachel's demonstrating. Now take a breath here. In this pose, hands just come to heart center today. Keep the spine long. Keep the shoulders down. Take a breath in. As you exhale, spin to the front runner's lunge. Hands on either side of your left foot. Step that left leg back. Find your plank pose. And lower chaturanga. Low push-up. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now take an inhale through your nose. And then exhale, sigh it out. Ha, let's let that heat go. Come back to your intention. Come back to your breath. Right leg lifts. Inhale. Exhale. Step it through. Warrior one on this side. Arms rise. Now set your foundation. You want your left toes facing the left corner of your mat. Rising out of inhale. Feet are nice and wide. Shoulders are drawing down. Take the arm variation that works for you. We're only here for another breath. When you're ready, hands interlace behind your low back. Inhale. Open up the heart and smile. Exhale, fold into humble warrior. Right shoulder comes inside our right knee. Those hands can stay at your low back and they can start to come up overhead. Very important here, drawing the right hip back, left hip forward. Breathe. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, wide-legged forward fold to the left, pivot to the side. Bend into your left knee, bend into your right knee. Take a little movement here, breathe. And we'll pause into the right leg, finding Skandasana on this side. Grab that block or stay high. Hands come together at heart center today. Again, you want your right heel on the earth. You want this left leg extended long, and you want to flex your toes. You're breathing here. You're drawing your shoulder blades down, squeezing your shoulders together. You're smiling, and you're getting this great stretch. Doing great. I hope you're feeling good. Take a breath here. Inhale, smile. Exhale, runner's lunge to the front. Hands on either side of your right foot. Step it back, plank pose, and find your little flow. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra, yogi's choice. Exhale, downward facing dog. Last little bit, and then we'll kind of bring it to the mat. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, step it through warrior two this time. So your left foot comes forward. Right foot is parallel to the back of your mat. You're going to cartwheel open your arms. You want to make sure your left heel and your arch of your right foot are in line. Shoulders are drawing down. Flip your front palm, reverse warrior. Now stay here for a moment. Notice if you started to straighten your left leg, keep it bent, take a breath in. As you exhale, warrior variation, left forearm, left thigh, right hand up overhead. Tuck that left hip under, feel the stretch to the side body. Take another breath. Come back through center, reverse triangle. Now we'll straighten the left leg. Start to hinge back, tuck that left hip under, feel the stretch, inhale. As you exhale, come forward, triangle pose, trikonasana. Left hand is down. If you need a block, you can bring a block in front of your left leg, connecting your hand there. Good, breathe. I think triangle is one of my favorite poses. Kind of works everything. Core engage, smile. Take a breath in. As you exhale, pyramid pose to the front of your mat. So hands are come to either side of your left leg. Grab the blocks under your palms if you need it. Shorten your stance just a little bit and keep the feet kind of wide, right? So we don't want to be on um, a clothesline. Think train tracks, right? So your right toes are turning. Now here, you really want to protect your left hamstring. If you need to place a slight bend in your left knee, go for it. The left hip draws back and the right hip draws forward. The tendency is to pop your left hip out to the side. Don't do that. Squeeze everything into midline. Take a breath here. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold a little bit deeper. See if you can get a little bit lower. That's cool. Now stay here for a moment or two. You have the option to add a little twist. So the, thing, the hips still stay square to the front, but we're twisting from the ribs. Right hand will stay down, left hand will start to lift. Again, that hand can be on a block, and you're just twisting. Take a breath in. Good. Take another inhale. As you exhale, release your left hand to the mat. Step it back, plank pose, and find a little flow. 
or skip it and come right back to downward facing dog. Your choice, other side. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, step it through, warrior two on the right. Spin your back foot down, widen your arms. Is your right knee over your right ankle? Is your heel perpendicular to the arch of your back foot? Warrior is a very strong pose, and if you hold this for quite some time, you'll really start to feel it in the shoulders and the arms and the legs. Front knee is bent 90 degrees. Right knee is right, facing towards the right baby toe. Be honest with your chest. Check in with your alignment. Flip your front palm reverse warrior. Right arm comes back and over. Feel the stretch of the side body. Take a breath in. Stay bent in this right leg. You've got it. Feel the benefits of the stretch. Come back through center. Warrior variation. Drop your right forearm down and your left hand up and over. Tuck the right hip under. Breathe here. Inhale, bring it back through center, reverse triangle, straighten your right leg, hinge back, reach back, legs are straight this time. Take another breath in, as you exhale, come back through center, trikonasana triangle pose, hand, right hand down, inside of the right foot, left arm reaches up and over as you smile here. Again, come back to your intention. Rather than thinking about how hard this is, or I'm not flexible, or whatever the case may be that might be running through your mind right now, find a, bit of, find a moment of gratitude and love for yourself, and love for all the things that your body can do instead of what it can't do. Now, yoga is a practice, and it's something that you're, like, it's like with everything. You're not necessarily good at it right away, but, like, what does that mean, and why does that matter? Um, it's about just feeling good in your body. Take a breath in. As you exhale, pyramid pose on that the side. I remember when I started running, Oh, about seven or eight years ago. So I wasn't a very athletic person in my, uh, in my younger years. Bring your hands to blocks if you need to. Find your pyramid pose. Now remember that right hip is going to pop out to the side. Keep it hugging into midline. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold into your pyramid pose. I remember, so back to my story a sec. Um, I didn't have a runner's body or I never thought I could run. Um, and when I moved to New Jersey, I started running with the running group runner around Princeton. I would be the last one. I was literally doing like, you know, 14, 15 minute miles. Um, they'd give me a slip of paper, say, here, Carrie, here's the route. Everybody would be done having coffee and I would still be like out and crying because I, I didn't think I was good. But it takes patience and time and practice and you're capable of doing anything, right? And sometimes, you know, we get discouraged when we're not good at something right away, but just be grateful, be hum it's humbling, you know, when you're a beginner and you get to learn. So think about that. Left hand down, right hand lifts. And just be present with your practice. Um, it evolves. That's why it's a practice. It's different every day, and it's always changing. Take a breath in. Exhale, plant your hand, step back, plank pose. Flow through a final chaturanga. We'll bring it onto our backs and cool it down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. From your down dog, start to walk your feet in a little bit. Come on to your bottom. So sit down, bring your knees into your chest. I'm just curious what people are saying. Hope you can all hear me. Oh, someone just joined. <laughs> Coming onto your bottom. We have a few more minutes here. We started a little bit late. So it'll be, I, you know, I'm, I'm an over planner. So 30 minutes is probably not so realistic for me. It's closer to 45. Come onto your butt back. Hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. And if you miss any part of that, the nice thing is this video will be saved and on Headspace's um, YouTube channel. So you can always visit it there. Take a happy baby here. Get your knees wide. Grab the outside edges of your feet. Oh, I know what I want to do. we got to come back to a seat. Just rock a little bit side to side. And then hug your knees back into your chest. Come to a seated position. I forgot. This is what we're going to do today. So last week we focused on half pigeon. Today we're actually going to do double pigeon. And you, can, you might need to use a block. With your right leg down, I'm going to do it with Rachel too because I can really use a hip stretch. Flex your right foot. Now take your left leg and bring it on top of your right knee. Now, this might not be accessible for many of you, and that's okay. This is um, double pigeon or fire log pose. Woo! The option you have, bring a block or a pillow in front of the right knee and rest your foot on top of it. The other option, maybe bring it um, underneath um, your left knee and rest it here. So option one, left foot's on the block in front. Option two, block is under your left knee. Now sit up nice and tall. This could be enough. Take a breath in. As you exhale, maybe you start to hinge forward. But think about drawing your hips back. You can use this block and bring your third eye onto the block. Holy moly, I am tight. 
Woo! Remember to breathe. <laughs> Breathing is going to help you get a little bit deeper. So in these kind of poses, it's about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? That's how I kind of live my life. My favorite quote, and I talked about this last week, I believe, is life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And if you were to visit the studio, it's on the studio wall. And I try to do something every day that makes me uncomfortable to challenge myself, challenge my limits, because that's how we get stronger. That's how we get better. That's how we grow, right? So this is pretty uncomfortable. And a lot of what we practice on our yoga mat and a lot of what we do will help transfer off the mat as well. People often ask me, you know, why or how can you do so many crazy things or you're, you know, you're a runner and triathlete and da 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 whatever. And I wasn't all those things. And, and part of the reason why I can still do some of that is yoga. It kind of helps calm my mind. The breath helps me with, you know, with working out, kind of helps me calm my nerves. Um, or practice, the breath that we practice here helps with swimming um, and running. Um, stretching, obviously, helps you feel good and, and prepares you in your body. We work on flexibility, mobility, stability. I mean, you name it. Yoga kind of covers it all. And that's why I love it so much, too. And it's uncomfortable, and that's, like, the beauty of it, to kind of live in that little uncomfortable, uh, live in that and grow from that, right? So we'll come back up. Inhale, bring it back through center. Uncross your legs if you want to shake them out a little bit. Windshield wiper. And we'll come to the other side. So your left foot will be down. Your right heel comes on top of your left knee. Now, again, your right foot can be on a block in front of you. Your block can be underneath your right knee. Or you might not use the block at all. You can sit up nice and tall, or you can start to hinge forward. So you'll feel it on the hip that's on top. So you feel it in your right leg, your right leg's on top, or your right leg your left knee on top. You're just going to take a few breaths here in your double pigeon. If you want to do a little bit more yoga with us, um, again, this I'm trying to build each week on each of the classes, so I'm going to challenge you a little bit more as we kind of go through. Last week, I took it a little easy on you. Today, we flowed a little bit or added, you know, pick up the pace just slightly, but still getting the deeper stretches. Um, and next week, you know, we'll add a little bit more. Um, just to, I want you to, one, show you kind of some different things that we can do um, and help and have, you know, to have a little bit of fun and get a little bit of a workout in. Um, lost my train of thought. <laughs> Just breathe. Come back to that intention. Make sure that we're kind of even on this side as the other side. And then when you're ready, you'll come back up, lifting the chest, uncrossing the legs, windshield wiper side to side. And then go ahead and extend your left leg long. Remove the flesh from underneath your bottom. Get your sit bones really rooted towards the mat. Extend your arms up overhead on an inhale and exhale, start to hinge forward, hinging at the hips. So try not to round your back. Keep your shoulder blades down, keep the spine long and the back flat. Again, Rachel is super flexible. She can bend in half. She can use multiple blocks to kind of reach and grab. That might not be you. That's okay. Reach where you can. It could be here. It could be your toes. It could be beyond your toes. That's cool. You can also bring a block or a pillow underneath your forehead and rest here. Just kind of feeling a stretch in the back of the legs and also in your back to kind of counter some of the upward dogs and the things that we were doing. Breathe. Notice where your breath went. And as you inhale, come back through center, lift up. Arms can reach up. And then bring your hands together, heart center, just take a moment. Extend your arms out in front of you. And using your core strength, lower down one vertebrae at a time. Release down to the mat. Hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze here. Rock a little bit side to side. I know what I was trying to say before. I lost my train of thought. I was going to say that um, if you want to do more yoga, you can visit our studio. We are doing live stream classes. Um, we have different classes every day. We've been adding. So they have 30-minute classes, hour classes. We have family yoga on Mondays and Wednesdays. So be sure to check it out. It is slightly different than what we're doing here. The pace, it's more of like a power yoga. We'll go a little bit quicker. Um, it's a moving meditation, so check that out. Classes are $5. So if you like what you see here, maybe maybe visit us. Um, and show our studio a little bit of love. It's been it's hard being a small business owner right now. And, um, you know, I want to make sure that we're taking care of my teachers 
and uh, you know, helping everyone during this difficult time. So yoga can do that. It can help you, and it also can help the folks here at Empower. So keep that in mind. So with your knees hugging in, Rachel's already for Shavasana. We're just gonna find end with a spinal twist and then we'll come into Shavasana. But we'll just allow your legs to drop over to the right. We'll post your arms or T out your arms. Always kind of ending in this little spinal twist. As you inhale, bring it back through center. And as you exhale, allow your legs to fall over to the left. Breathe here, smile. And then inhale, bring it back through center. Roll up to a nice tight little ball. And then as you exhale, release your legs out in front of you, arms by your sides. Now palms face the ceiling to receive all that the universe has to offer, right? There is so much abundance and so much, and you just need to be open to receiving it. And right now it might not feel like there's a lot of love and good out there, but there is, I promise you. From the people that are, you know, helping everybody, the doctors, the nurses, police officers, first responders, there is so much and there's so much love and there is so much goodness out there. And you play the news, you don't always see it. But trust me when I say there is. And find a little bit of love and goodness in your heart, right? Let's just take a few moments here. Shavasana is our final resting pose. It's an opportunity to allow our body to feel the effects of our practice and our hard work. So allow yourself to just be for another moment. Appreciate the stillness and the quiet. Appreciate yourself and all that you are. And start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Arms reach up overhead, full body stretch. Put your knees into your chest, show yourself some love. Thank you, everybody, for this hard work this morning and all the hard work it does do each and every day. Roll over onto your right side in the fetal position. Take a moment here. We come here to this fetal position. It's kind of like rebirth. We have an opportunity to, to wake and arise and awaken and have another fresh start. Make your way to a seated position when you're ready. Hands come together at heart center. Take a bow here to yourself for being amazing, for showing up, for making time. Take a bow to everyone else who's joining us. We are grateful for you. We appreciate you. We see you. The light in me honors, respects, loves the light in each and every one of you. Together we bow and say namaste. Namaste. Yay. Yay. So we hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, every Wednesday, 10 o'clock, it'll be eh, about 45 minutes long, 30 to 45 minutes. So try not to, to, to do too, too much. I, I appreciate you and your time and um, showing up for yourself. If you need anything, um, questions, comments, let me know. Um, if there's something that you want to try to work on next week, open to ideas or suggestions. Um, again, if you want to practice a little bit more, Visit EmpowerYogaNJ.com. Click on the Schedule tab. All of our live classes are there. In fact, next Wednesday is Empower Yoga's third birthday, and I'll be teaching a 60-minute um, flow that night. It's free. So not only will I be here next Wednesday morning on Facebook Live through Head Sweats, but I will also be um, teaching a Zoom class for Empower Yoga from 4 to 5. Um, that's April 8th. So if you're interested, visit our website, log in. I will send you the link to our Zoom. I'll get to see you and meet you um, in person, which would be amazing. So be sure to check that out. Other than that, I just want to thank Head Sweats for allowing me the opportunity to do this. I'm incredibly grateful. And I'm incredibly grateful for those who, who tune in and who will tune in. It's, you know, I'm here for you. So if there's anything you need, don't hesitate to let us know. I'll see you guys soon. Come in and shut off the live. Enjoy your day. Happy Wednesday. And take care of yourselves and take care of each other.